Welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. Download the notes at kcm.org slash notes. Hello, everybody. I'm Kenneth Copeland. This is the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. Praise God. Let's have a word of prayer, and we'll get right into today's Bible lesson. Father, we just praise you and thank you, sir. We worship you today, and we open our hearts and we open our minds to receive revelation from heaven, revelation of the kingdom of God. And especially in, in, in these studies that you, have, uh, that you have directed and instructed us to do on this broadcast today, revelation and insight into the force of faith. And we thank you for it and we praise you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Now listen, don't, don't forget, download this week's broadcast study notes free at just go to kcn.org slash notes and, and all of the scriptures will be there, all of the outlines will be there. And in fact, if you're teaching Sunday school or, or you're teaching a class, preaching a service, well, and, and if there's material there that you can use, you're just free to preach from it, use it in any way that the Lord directs you to do so. Let's open our Bibles today to Romans chapter 3. We're going to be studying the force of faith for some time now. Well, until the Lord says to change, this is what we're going to be looking at. So now let's, let's look in uh, the, the third chapter of the book of Romans. Where is, uh, this is the 27th verse. Where is boasting then? It is excluded by what law? Of works? No. But by the law of faith. Now, let's look at Romans 8. Romans 8 and verse 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. We need to understand and realize that this, it, this, this actually is the base of all spiritual understanding. Because people have had the idea that the spiritual world is just, you know, it's, well, you just never know what God's going to do. I just, well, you never know. I don't know why that happened. I don't know why that didn't happen. No, no, no. The, the spiritual realm is highly regulated by laws, spiritual laws that govern everything. The reason we have natural laws, I'm talking about the, the, like the law of gravity, the, the laws of physics. The reason we have these laws is because the spiritual laws of heaven created all natural things. And the, the, the natural laws of physics literally mirror the spiritual laws that created them. And let me give you an example here because this shows um, two different ways of thinking. And our thinking must be renewed in the, uh, do you hear me say must? The, our thinking must be renewed. Let, let's take, for instance, well, let's take the law of gravity. I enjoy long range shooting and, uh, where I have a, a, a rifle that I really do enjoy. And uh, here, you, here you have this uh, a scope that it, it's a, a scope that has a bullet drop compensator. Now, why would you have to have something like that? Well, the, when a bullet comes out of the barrel, it has a little, uh, it, it's running so fast when it, it has a little, little lift to it 
and then it comes back down and it begins to drop. Why is it doing that, you say, Brother Copeland? I'm glad you asked. It, it is doing that because gravity is working on that bullet. And eventually, someplace out there, it's going to hit the ground. Now, that bullet drop compensator, that we're, we're out at the range and, and, and we're, we're sighting in and we sight in at 100 yards and then we sight in at 200 yards and we're working the ballistics and we, we, we sight in three, four, and 500 yards. And so that compensator, once, once the ballistics are set in there, then if, if you range that shot at 550 yards, you set the compensator and that bullet drop will hit that target at 550 yards. Oh, didn't you enjoy that? I mean, we spent, we spent about four and a half hours out here today, a beautiful sunshine day, and, and just enjoyed the range and everything. And, and we put, put a rifle up and put it in the case and, and all that. And we say, well, oh, Lord, uh, please don't change the law of gravity before next week. I'm going hunting next week. And, and I, I, I don't want to have to go through all that again. I, uh, the, have you ever heard as stupid a prayer as that? Please don't change gravity between now and next week. Come on. <laughs> You're beginning to see what I'm talking about, aren't you? Now, what's happening here, the only thing that can change now between today and next week is the wind and the temperature. Gravity is not going to change. If I have that scope set up right, it's going to hit every time in the same place. It can only be affected by something that is changeable, which would be the temperature, the wind, <laughs> or me, <laughs> but gravity is going to be the same next week, the week after that, and the week after that. Now, an airplane would have flown in 1816 the same as 2016. Why? All of the laws were the same. The problem was only the birds knew what the law of lift was all about. But as, as people began to study the birds and they began to study the laws of physics that work with and supersede gravity so that through the laws of lift, you could get that airplane off the ground. Now then, when we realize that this is what we're dealing with here, we're dealing with spiritual laws. There's no such thing as the faith of God not working. There's no such thing as the Word of God not working. Well, Brother Copeland, I mean, I tried that faith and it didn't work. No, uh, no, darling, let me tell you something. Now, let me help you with that. <laughs> it tried you or it tried me. We didn't work. We misapplied the laws or through ignorance of those laws. For example, I, I mean, when I first, uh, I, I first accepted the Lord as my Savior, now I was raised in a Christian home, but I, I, I turned away from it when I was a, uh, just a young boy and I came back uh, in 1962 and made Jesus the Lord of our life. Glory and I, Glory and I had been... Uh, married six months, and both of us got saved within two weeks of one another. Well, I had heard things like, you know, it, it, what, what faith comes from uh, traumatic experiences and, and, and hard times, you know, the trying of your, uh, of your faith builds faith and, and causes faith to come. That's just simply not true. That's like going into the, uh, you, have, you, have you ever seen those goofy pictures about old, old, 
old movies that were taken way back there years and years ago and this stuff that people were trying to do to get off of the ground. But you finally had um, Orville and Wilbur Wright that studied the laws, the, the laws of physics, and they finally discovered one step at a time how to use those laws to their advantage and finally got that airplane off the ground. It finally did it. And the same laws that flew that little and that, that, that little fabric covered thing back there all those years ago are the same laws that flies the Citation 10 or the 747 today. And I enjoy operating inside the boundaries of those laws. I just dearly enjoy putting the power up on those engines. What am I doing? I'm creating thrust. That's part of the law of lift and then enough speed comes over those wings and it gets to the place where the pressure is, is at the place where that wing is designed to fly. And I'm going to tell you, there's just something about it. Glory to God. Amen. So, but when you, when you don't know the laws of faith, see, what I said a while ago is just simply not true. That faith does not come from traumatic experiences. The trying of your faith does not, it, it does not cause faith to come. That you go back to the word, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's what the manual says about the faith of God. That's the way it works. The trying of your faith, the scripture says in the book of James, worketh patience. The trying of your faith is wh where endurance, faith and patience, you, you find them linked together all, all throughout the New Testament, faith and patience, the power twins, faith and endurance. Praise God. That's part of the laws of faith. You put those laws into operation correctly, they work. They work every time. They never change. And, and, and we're going to see as we study these, anybody, I don't care who you are. I don't care where you were born. I don't care how much education you have or how much you don't. I'm, I, I, where, any place in the world, whatever your ethnic background is, if you are a human being, faith is available to you and it will work. I don't care where you are or what language you speak. It has nothing to do with it. The laws of faith are set forever. God released them when, when he created the heaven and the earth. Amen. The scripture says that he created these things. Let's learn over there and look at that in the 11th chapter of the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 11, we, we find, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the Word of God so that things, things, material things, which are seen. That's talking about the heaven and the earth in the beginning and everything since. Things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. I've, I've heard people say this. In fact, I've, I've read certain articles and uh, thing by, by uh, Christian leaders that God created the heaven and the earth out of nothing. No, no. No, He created out of something you can't see. We found right here that through faith we understand the worlds were framed by the Word of God. But now He started right here. 
Faith is the substance of things. It is the evidence of things not seen. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the Word of God. It was through faith the worlds were framed. No, so in that very beginning episode, the laws of faith were put into motion. The Spirit of God was moving on the face of the deep. Nothing was happening. God said, light be, light was. How is faith released? First, it is believed in the heart. Then it is released with the mouth. And the Spirit of God, Jesus put it like this. He said, it's the Father that dwelleth within me. Well, in the 14th chapter of John, he said, the words that I speak unto you, they are not mine. It's the Father that dwelleth within me. He does the works. Amen. So we, we, we see then that, that faith begins in the heart. It is spoken out the mouth, and the Father that dwells within, He does the works. Now we start with the words of the Father, which is right here. Amen. This is the Word of God. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. His Word, God has spoken out His mouth aloud. Every word from Genesis to Revelation, he spoke these words making covenant. Now, that means that these words are alive. So when we meditate these words, when we hear these words preached, then faith begins to come and faith begins to rise. Faith is a spiritual force. It doesn't come out of the mind. It doesn't, it has nothing to do with the flesh. It will affect the flesh. But faith is unseen by the, our sense gate of eyes. Faith can't be heard with the ear. The force of it can't be heard. We hear the word with our ears. We say the word with our mouth. But those words are depositing the faith of God inside our spirit. Now, our spirit man, according, let's, let's turn over there and look at this. This is part of the law of faith. In uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, being born again, not of corruptible seed. Everything that has life, everything, everything. Jesus said we compare the whole kingdom of God to a man putting seed in the ground. Amen. So every, every living thing, all things started with a seed. So being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible seed by the word of God, which liveth, which is alive. The Word is alive and sharper than any two-edged sword. Now, which lives and abides. Once it's there, it's there forever. So the, we were born again by the seed of the Word of God. Now that's this seed, God spoke words to Abram made blood covenant with him. He became Ab Abraham. His name and God's name were made one together from Abram to Abraham. Now, <laughs> God spoke that to him, but the scripture said he was speaking to Jesus. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Those words that God spoke to Abraham, made covenant. Those were embodied in the message that 
Gabriel brought to little Mary. And he spoke those word seeds to her. Now, the Word of God is every cell of the human body, all, <laughs> all those little cells all doing their thing all over your body and every different part of you. You can take one cell, and in that one cell is your complete DNA. One word from God change your life forever. Why? Because his entire spiritual DNA, everything he is, everything he has, and everything he knows is in one of his words. And he spoke words through Gabriel to little Mary, and she received him. She said, be it done unto me, sir, as you have spoken. Those words went into her womb, and she pondered them in her heart, and, and Gabriel told her what would happen. The Holy Spirit hovered over her and a holy thing was born in her and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Now, the same Word of God, the New Testament Word of God, the day you received it and believed in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead and you, with the mouth, confession was made unto salvation. The Spirit of God hovered over you, and in you was conceived a holy creation with the complete DNA of God in your spirit. His faith is in there, His righteousness is in there, and greater is He that's in you than he that's in the world. We're out of time. Glory to God. I'll be back in just a moment. We hope you enjoyed today's teaching from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. Be sure to get the notes at kcm.org notes. And remember, Jesus is Lord.